Welcome back to today's video where we continue with project getting our Mark II Focus RS back on the road with the bits on the floor. I know, it slips off the tongue, I've done it Ash. I've already done absolutely loads to this car, so before you carry on watching this video, hit the link just up there and go and watch the previous one. First things first, Ash wanted this fuel tank looking spick and span, so we gave that a good hosing down. Once we'd finished that, it was on to the leaky CV boot on the front drive shaft. So whilst Ash takes that out, I want to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. I have never seen that side. I've a drive shaft before. Is that what they all look like? No. Right, come on. It's like trying to deal with a toddler. Get the CV boot in there. Come on, over here. So actually, it's very quick to point out, I bought the wrong one. I bought the outer CV boot, not the inner one. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace really is the number one platform to help you run your business. And they've made it super easy for anyone to make their own website. Squarespace offer loads of different website templates for you to choose from. Once you've found the one that suits you, simply add text, edit any images or logos, and create exactly what you want. Correct kit acquired 70 quid later, there you go. If you're looking to grow and engage your audience, then the email campaigns are a perfect tool for you to do that. That's it, Ash is banned. He's breaking me Amazon tools here. Create powerful email content that matches your website's products, blog posts, or logos, so your messaging is clear, consistent, and effective. I bought these, which Ash told me I gotta get for these specially sort of band clip things here. And look what he's done to it. Bent. And that's butchered that clip as well. I hope it's not too late to give them a one star rating. And if all of that isn't enough, you can see exactly what your fantastic new website would look like on a mobile device. Our freshly powder coated rear subframe is sorted. We've got the new lower arms. These drop links I'd already replaced a little while ago. And the springs, the factory springs. So when you're ready to go and create your own amazing website, make sure you check out the link in the description box below and use code EVILGT for 10% off. But this is looking miles better. We've got the original anti-roll bar that's all been powder coated. We've then also got the Powerflex anti-roll bar bushes. For otherwise, this is ready to go back on. This is the Hammerite Direct to Rust Black Metal Paint. We'd already treated it with rust protection before this. This is hopefully going to give it a bit of added protection. Once this was dried, it was on with the subframe. Rear subframe all on, tightened up. Now it's time for the new rear shocks. Brand new from Ford, these are over 200 quid each. But I managed to find a pair of virtually new ones for 60 quid. More RS tax saved. <laughs> I had to replace these because the bottom bushes in the old shocks had gone, causing it to knock. Making some real progress now, it was on with our freshly rattle can 75 pound subframe off a of Ford Cougar. On with the freshly powder coated cross member and things are looking good. On to the creaky Revo knuckle next and I think I can safely say I found the problem. Oh my god, I've just gone to take this bottom bit of this off and you can see what is left of the bearing that was in there, well, <laughs> that is knackered. I got back to work hammering out what was left of that needle bearing, which wasn't much, I'll be honest. I've ordered a repair kit which comes with both the top and bottom bearings, as well as a new C-clip, which you can see I'm really struggling with here, as the rusts fused it to the metal surrounding it. Tried some C-clip pliers which I bought again off Amazon and I bent them as well. Any high quality tool manufacturers want to sponsor a YouTube channel? We have the knackered knuckle there and this is the bearing I can't get out, the other one fell out practically. That needs to go to be pressed out and the anti-roll bar link needs to be pressed out too. Onto the near side, I've not stripped this down the same because this moves beautifully, that one's absolutely fine. However, the anti-roll bar link does need to be pressed out as well. So the initial plan was to only be replacing the top and bottom bearings of the driver's side Revo knuckle. But since I've stripped that down, I've also had a quick listen to this and this is stiff and gritty and not great. So I think that the hub bearing is gonna to need to be replaced as well. Then looking at the near side hub, I'll just look at the state of the inside of that wheel bearing. Now that's actually the better sounding of the two, but it looks miles worse. So although this moves nice and freely, the near side, I think rather than just refurbishing the driver's side, I'm gonna do the exact same with the near side as well. So that means a full strip down, all of the bearings out, we'll get it sandblasted, primed, coated, new bearings in, back on the car. Now that's way more money and way more work than I originally wanted to do. But they'll still be fully refurbished for a fraction of the price of a thousand pounds each. They're probably going to work out at about 150 pounds per side, which is a huge saving. Having already stripped one of these down, I was getting much quicker now. 
Now it looks like this near side one was replaced fairly recently which explains why it moves so nicely and freely and it's the same story for the top bearing on the near side knuckle as well that looks well weeks old but whilst we're in pieces we may as well get them done. Now there must be one thing in life that you guys would buy or do and you think wow I think I'm actually an adult now and here's mine. Bought myself a 20 ton press this is another first for me, and hopefully another certificate. I thought I'd spare you the half an hour of me cocking about trying to get the right position for this arm. And that seems to be the biggest challenge really, is getting it so that it is right and it doesn't push against itself. The platform to work on with these plates is a bit fiddly to be fair, it's not the best. But what should I expect for 140 quid? And there we have it, my very first Preston Bush. Now let's see if it looks right on the car. I've no idea why, but in my head I thought this should be fairly straightforward, right? Three bolts into the hub, two bolts into the chassis, no problem. Well you can clearly see it's like the rear subframe needed to move forward slightly and I couldn't find a way to do that and bolt everything up at the same time so I loosely bolted the three bolts into the hub and then got a screwdriver to pry the arm forward for the holes to line up. I'm never going into a job thinking it's going to be simple again. That was hard work that. I don't know if it was because the bush that I pressed in was a mill or two out, I've no idea but it was like this whole rear hub needed to come forward but obviously I can only jack it up, I can't push it forward so Anyway, we got there in the end. Onto the near side now, and I know what I've just said, but because I've already done one, I am hoping this is gonna be easier. The bush pressed in nicely, and it seemed much easier to bolt the arm to the car this time too. Can't fault the quality of these comline bushes. New trailing arm bushes and trailing arms completed. Onto the rear hubs and discs next. The most complicated thing with this next job was deciding which side went where. There were just four bolts to the back of each hub and an ABS sensor to connect in the center. Fairly straightforward, or so I thought. Please kill me now. I put this arm on, I think this pipe needs to be this side of the arm because I can now can't get the caliper into position. So after wrestling with this for ages to get these three bolts into here, I've now got to undo them, get this, this side of the arm and start again. I say it every video, honestly, hats off to you boys because I'm not cut out for this. I'm not going to bore you to death redoing what I've just done, so I'll crack on with that and we'll get back to the time lapse of me putting this caliper on. I don't think there are many things more disheartening in life than struggling with a really tricky job to then realise you've got to undo all your hard work because you've cocked something up or not put it in the right position. Luckily, however, I am a brake specialist now. Two bolts into the caliper carriers got these fixed into position. That was fairly straightforward, even I managed it. I'm smashing through this job that fast, even the battery ratchet can't handle it. That's the last tool I buy off Amazon. Two bolts each side for the drop links and we're finally getting somewhere. So the back end of this is starting to look like a car again, finally. But next up I'm going to have a go at pressing out these old anti-roll bar links. My new top of the range press made easy work of these anti-roll bar links. I used a 22mm socket and then give it a whack. After that I moved on to the bearing at the top. So that's the top bearing out, anti-roll bar link. This is ready to go off to be blasted and painted. Just the other side to do, as well as the hubs, and we're good. I've hit a bit of a snag. I don't think that those three arms there are gonna support the weight of a 20 ton press trying to push a wheel bearing out. So I'm gonna take these to the old school engineers at the head shop, who'll definitely be able to get them out. And just like that, we're out. We've got a fan of the channel next door to head shop. Do you wanna say hello? What do you boys do? We all BT pallets. Any spare pallets? Any firewood, any kindling that you want, come and see me. There you go. So thanks very much to Head Shop for sorting that out. Now all the bearings are out, it's off for shop blasting. And the guys at Wyker very kindly said that they would do this for us. These bits have come up like brand new. Cannot thank the guys at Wyke enough, them parts look absolutely perfect. Let's get them back to the unit, back on the Focus. Before we went putting anything back on the Focus, we wanted to make them look like our brand new condition and paint them up. So that meant rattle can primer in and some black paint. Out with the old ABS sensors. In with the brand new hubs. And the brand new anti-roll bar link. Then in with the new ABS sensors. In with the new top bearings. You got to pump it up, don't you know? Pump it up, you got to. Secured in position by the new circlip, and then it was time for full reassembly. A bit of a tap into place, three 13mm bolts at the bottom, 
one massive 30 mil bolt at the top. Trying to get this hub on the car was a bit fiddly, you had to line it up with the strut at the top, the drive shaft in the middle and the wishbone at the bottom. On with the comline track red end and we're done. Driver side done, now we're going to repeat the process with the passenger side. On with the disc from VBT first, along with the spacers. Finger tighten the nuts on. Centering the rest of the way with a buzz gun. And then I learned a nifty little trick from Ash, don't tell him he'll get a big head, but this stops the disc from spinning whilst I'm trying to tighten the nuts up the rest of the way. Then it was on with a caliper, two bolts at the back of that. I used a bit of thread lock and tightened them bolts up with the strong arm too. Disc and caliper on driver's side, repeat the process passenger side. Ash then made me jet wash the wheel arch liners, but it was actually quite satisfying. On with the wheel arch liner and screw that into position. And I thought this day would never come, but the wheels are finally back on it. Just the exhaust left now with a bit of help from Scott, and we're virtually home and dry. Now, because Ash the Mute doesn't want to tell you what's going on next, I'm going to have to explain it to you, but you're going to have to bear with me. And that is effectively all the new arms and bushes and bearings and stuff that is attached to the front and the back. We've left loose for now, because what we're going to do is put the car on the floor. What are we going to do? I think we're putting the car on the floor. Let me try that again. So we're going to put the car on the floor, take measurements, then put it back in the air. Why are you just pointing at shit? Just explain this, it'd be so much easier. <laughs> Effectively, because everything's new, we've left it loose, so we're going to put the weight on the car. That's where then all of the arms and bushes are supposed to sit. Take measurements, put it back in the air, and then tighten it up with the correct measurements. What do you keep pointing at over there? Gearbox stand. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, the gearbox stand, right. We'll use that to get in the position. Way! Fucking hell, this is hard work. I'm going to have to start putting disclaimers on this kind of stuff because it's like Chinese whispers. Ash tells me, and then I tell you something completely different. I'm also being reminded that there's loads more things than just the exhaust and a couple of wheels. Excuse that four-year-old's handwriting. <laughs> and just like that, she moves. The only thing left to do now is a Geo at Awesome GTI. And whilst it's on their full poster, they can undo the bolts and then re-tighten them to preload the bushes. Because we don't have anything high enough to keep it on its own weight up off the floor or our own four poster. So I'm sure the lads at Awesome will be able to sort that out for us whilst it's on their ramp. That's what his cars. They all, they all do that. They all do it. Listen, thank you very much. If you've enjoyed today's video, thank you very much for watching. Please do consider liking, subscribing. Please subscribe to the channel. It means the world. I'll catch you on the next one where we will finally have the... Noisy bastard. We'll catch you on the next one where we finally have the Focus geode and all the bushes tightened up and all that kind of stuff. And we'll go out for its first rip to see how it is. I'd be very surprised if it's not epic because it was already brilliant before. Is that kid been messing with a petrol cap? Maybe. Say try to everybody, Ash. Well, I'll f break his legs if I see him. There's a kid go about to get drop kicked. Uh, I'll say try to everybody, mate. No. Why? Just say bye.